My name is Dr. Corey Kidd, the founder and CEO of Catalia Health. So we are an AI-driven chronic disease management company. So what we focus on is helping patients with a variety of different conditions stay on therapy longer. So helping that patient do that, but from a business model perspective, ultimately providing our customers, big pharma and large healthcare systems with better profits and better outcomes. So I'm going to talk for a minute about you know, why we're using this robot. So first, it's proven to create engagement, and the short explanation explanation, the simple explanation of why that's the case is the same reason that we're all in this room today. We could have recorded these presentations from our offices, you could be watching through your web browser at home, but we're all here face to face because we get intuitively that face to face makes a difference. And it turns out that psychologically those differences carry over into the world of technology. When we put that cute little robot in front of our patients, it's more engaging, it creates a stronger relationship, patients find it more reliable, more trustworthy, more informative. And what we do is not so much about the technology, but about the AI and the psychology to create conversations on the fly for that patient. So the interaction with the robot is actually this back and forth conversation, kind of like talking to your Amazon Echo or to Siri on your iPhone. We brought an IDEO, the big design firm, to help us design the robot. They're also one of the investors in the company. Uh, and what this is about is not so much about reminders, but the real challenges that patients face when they're managing a chronic condition. And so what we see there, I think the slide's uh, changing here, what we see there is a lot of these challenges are about the other things that are going on, the psychological issues that we see as we go through managing many of these conditions. Uh, can I get the next slide? Okay, thank you. <laughs> and, and so often this is about managing the side effects, the symptoms of the condition, and understanding what the patient needs to do in order to overall manage their therapy and their health. So moving on to the slide after that, if we can keep them moving back there, I'll just put this up. Uh, let's go on to, uh, to the next one at this point. So our business model here is, while, while our interface to patients is very innovative, the business model is not at all. So we are a care management program, exactly like care management programs that are provided to patients today. Our initial customers are largely pharmaceutical manufacturers. If we can get the next slide up, uh, we'll show some info about this. There we go. Uh, and so Catalia Health is providing this interface to patients. We ship out the robot directly to patients. This is something that sits on their home, on their countertop, or their bedside table, uh, and interacts with them on an everyday basis, provides information to them about the challenges that they're facing with their disease state, and through that can help the patient better manage their condition, but also get data back to our customer, the pharma company or the hospital, to help them better manage a large patient population. So business model here then is this is kind of looks like a SaaS company. So we charge on the order of $100 to $300 per patient per month for providing this care management program. And again, this is existing pricing in industry. This is not something new that we've come up with. If we can get the next slide up here. Uh, so we are entering the market now. We have contracts in place. We will start shipping to rheumatoid arthritis and late stage kidney cancer patients in May. Uh, we will be rolling out with heart failure patients at Kaiser Permanente later this year. And these are commercial contracts. So these are not kind of theoretical pricing. These, these are the kind of pricing that we've signed with our customers already. And if we can show one last slide, I'll just wrap up uh, on kind of showing what this robot interface looks like. No time for a demo right now, but we should have one here later today for you to try out if you'd like to. Thank you. Excellent job, Gordon. Sorry for the uh, problem. <laughs> you got a few extra seconds. Judges. All right. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, how uh, the motivation works? So you mentioned uh, you've got some contracts in place, and these are folks that have very specific, sounds like rheumatoid arthritis, so some very specific disease models. Okay. What's your hunch or, or your best traction? Is it going to be on the pharma side? Is it going to be on, on the provider side? And then um, based on your current uh, information, who, who's the most receptive to this type of um, um, interaction? Do you need an extra physician lean in, or is it... 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll try to break that apart into a few questions. So from the business model perspective, the, the first uptake we're seeing is definitely in the pharma space. Pharma is very innovative in trying to find new programs for care management for patients. The space that we're in is specifically around specialty pharmaceuticals and care management programs for that are today about a two to two and a half billion dollar a year market in the US. So again, not something new, something that's uh, well established and still growing very quickly. So we're seeing quick uptake there. On the healthcare provider side, you know, healthcare institutions, we're seeing uptake there as well, a little bit slower as we expected, you know, slightly slower to move. Uh, and we expect ultimately that to be an even bigger market. From a patient perspective and the motivation there, one thing we think about is when we introduce this to the patient. And what I mean by that is there are two times when we try to introduce this. One is at the point of a new diagnosis. And the second is that a new treatment for an existing diagnosis. The reason for that is at that point in time, there's this intrinsic motivation, right? This has happened to me. I'm going to fight this. I'm going to beat this. I'm going to do whatever I can. So we introduce it at that point. And again, a lot of this goes back to the psychology. And so a lot of those first conversations are about building up that relationship, how this device is going to help the patient, and leverage that to then keep them engaged for much longer. It seems that. Uh Sort of, you, the persuasive AI is the proprietary piece, it seems like. Does that come with an obligation to report things like a patient has become depressed? And if so, like, does that leave patients, if, assuming you have to disclose that, feeling like you're putting Big Brother in their living room to, to monitor them during their treatment, right? So the, the, the first part of that, yes, the, these AI algorithms uh, you know, are definitely kind of the secret sauce of what we're doing. So I've been working on this kind of technology for almost 20 years now, continue to you know, evolve these algorithms. Katalia Health has been building this for about two and a half years, and that's really the focus of the engagement. From the patient perspective, it's really important how we introduce this. From the first phone call or the first email or however this is going to be introduced from the patient through those first conversations between the robot and the patient in their home, making sure we set up expectations for what this can do, what this can't do, what data is being gathered, and who that's being reported to. So we're very straightforward with patients about what we're getting, why it can benefit them, and who it's going to. So in general, this data is going to their doctor or their pharmacist, and we explain exactly why that's the case. And yes, there is an obligation to do that You know, with this data that we get. Ultimately, we're trying to provide better care to those patients, and that includes getting more information back to the clinicians that are treating them. Could you give us a little bit of a, um, a framework for understanding the cost of the robot? Who actually incurs the cost? Is it a lease or is it something that essentially is purchased on behalf of the patient? And also the ROI that's required to incur that cost vis-a-vis -vis other kind of care, you know, care management solutions. Like there's a lot of these new mobile care management platforms that are emerging. Sure, so pull up all the spreadsheets. and <laughs> Quick answer, the device itself is very low cost, right? We focused on building a really low cost device. And so what that means is business model wise, we're not selling this thing, right? This is just the interface we give to a patient in order to provide this service. So everything is priced. Uh, for the robot itself, the, you know, the, the goal here is get the cost of the device in the tens of dollars, right? We're a little above that now because we're building a small number, but a very inexpensive device, right? Much less than the cell phone that's in your pocket right now. And, you know, I talked about pricing in terms of, you know, 100 to $300 per patient per month. Really depends on the application and the value that we provide. And so I think in terms of ROI really depends. If we, if we take the kind of pharma side of it, we have more detailed models there. It depends on the cost of your drug, right? So if we're talking about a drug, that's a few hundred dollars a month, your ROI looks very different than, say, an oncology drug that's $15,000 a month, right? If we get on the latter, if we get an uptake of, you know, one or two percent longer duration of engagement, then you get an ROI. On the others, you need tens of percent uh, longer engagement to get an ROI. So kind of why we start in that particular space. One quick question. How many, about how many people have used it and have you published any of the data? Okay, so first version of this, first time something like this was put in front of patients was 10 years ago this year. So I was finishing my PhD at MIT, did my clinical work at Boston Medical. We did a randomized control trial with an earlier version of this. That has been published. With what we're doing at Katalia Health, we've been developing this new interface for the last couple of years. With this version of it, we've done a lot of user experience testing. The first time these go out to patients over the long term will be in May of this year. So we'll have significantly more data by this fall.